Hey guys, so we're out here at the river and we're standing on the bank. One of the most requested videos that we've gotten in the past two years is how do I fish from the bank using a Dick Knight spoon. So we're out here on the bank of the Skykomish River and we're going to walk you through what you want to look at and how we want to fish the Dick Knight spoon effectively from the bank. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is walking down to the river. Now right now I'm at the water's edge. When you get to the bank to fish, you don't want to just go barreling out into the water. It depends on the location you're fishing, those fish may actually be traveling very close to shore. So it's important that you take a look around you, see what the other anglers are doing really make those observations that will help you be successful when you fish. So we're going to look at how we're going to cast, why we're going to cast there, and we'll walk you guys through fishing the Dick Knight Spoon from the bank. Okay guys, let's talk about our setup really quick. Uh, I've got my main line here. The first thing I've put on my main line is a five millimeter bead. This five millimeter bead is going to protect our rod tip. If we over reel, we don't want to damage the rod tip. The next thing I'm going to put on is a snap swivel. This is a size 10. This is a very popular size that I like to use drift fishing. Don't use an interlock. You don't need that. Just use a plain snap swivel. To our snap swivel, we attach our weight and I'll cover weight in a minute. I then put on a four millimeter bead. The purpose of the four millimeter bead is to protect the knot right there that goes to the barrel swivel. As we're fishing, this hits against that knot. I want that knot to stay strong and not weaken. So that's why we use a four millimeter bead. Then we're going to use a number 10 barrel swivel. From the barrel swivel, we'll tie in our leader, which is what we're going to tie our spoon onto. Very typical on rivers is fishing with a number one Dick Knight. You can fish the Wii or a Zero, and you can fish a number two, but a number one is a great starting point for fishing a Dick Knight spoon on the river. Okay guys, so we talked about our setup. Let's talk about the amount of weight you're gonna use. Now, there's lots of options out there. You can use slinky weights, uh, you can use holocore lead, you can use solid lead. I use 3 16 solid core lead. Um, I have a machine that I use to cut my lead that I get from the Cowlitz River Sales, and it's very precise. So I cut my lead based on length, not weight. So I start all of my lead cutting at like one inch, and I go all the way up to two and a half inches on lead. The amount of lead that you're going to use on the river fishing a Dick Knight spoon is critical. If you have too much lead and it's catching every foot, two, three feet, you're not going to be fishing your spoon effectively, which means that spoon is not going to have that action that you need. It's imperative that you choose the right amount of lead so that it only ticks across the bottom about every six to eight feet. That will allow the spoon to action properly dependent on the flow. So let's talk about where you're going to cast and why. If you cast too far upriver, I can guarantee you, your spoon's gonna lay over, it's gonna get hung up, and you're gonna break off. So you're gonna lose your spoon. If we come out to the river, the area I'm going to fish is going to be the area from in front of me, down river, to about 3 o'clock, maybe 2 o'clock, okay? That's the effective area that I'm going to fish, okay? In order to get in front of me and start fishing there, I'm going to cast slightly up river maybe about 10 degrees, okay, just slightly. If I make an errant cast and I'm casting up here, I'm gonna be in trouble because the flow of the river is gonna cause that spoon to lay over, grab a rock, a stump, whatever might be in the river, and we're going to get hung up. So it's really important, guys, 
that when you cast and you come down to the river, you look straight out in front of you and you're going to not cast straight in front of you, but slightly up river. So let's have a couple casts here and I'll show you exactly what you should be looking at. Now when you get this set up, what you want to do is you want to have that lead about 10 to 12 inches from your rod tip. So here's our rod tip, there's our lead. That allows the lead, the rod, and the leader to work in harmony. Casting a Dick Knight spoon isn't about power, it's just about using the rod and its abilities to get out onto the water. So I'm going to cast out slightly upriver from where I'm standing, and then I take up slack. Now with this river flow, I've got pretty good flow today. I don't need to crank very quickly at all, but I do need to give a little bit of input to that spoon. It's very important that as my line moves down, my rod tip follows the line, okay? Follow your line with your rod. The reason we do this is because when a fish hits, we don't want to set the hook sideways. We want to set the hook straight up and down, okay? Salmon and steelhead have hard mouths. So we want to set that hook up so that hook catches them in the top part of their mouth, okay? Very important. So once again, I reel up. I get just the right amount of line at the end of my rod. I look slightly up from where I want to cast, and I send it. As it lands, I start following my line with my rod tip, and I'm fishing. If a fish hits, it's straight up, and now I have the fish on. You guys, when you're fishing these spoons, it's very important that you achieve the action that the spoon is supposed to have. If you reel too fast, that spoon's going to spin. You're not fishing effectively. We want that nice wobble, as you can see on the video right here, of what this spoon should look like. Drift fishing a Dick Knight spoon is one of the easiest things that you're going to do on the river. When I talk about slightly reeling, it can be painfully slow. If we're talking about how much am I reeling, depending on the flow, this might be it right here. That might be all of the speed that I'm going to reel. It takes a very little to impart that action to the spoon properly. Drift fishing a Dick Knight spoon on the river is easy. It's even easier when you have good flow. Now I should point out, there are times where you have too much flow on the river and it's just not going to work for you. In that case, you need to move to some other type of fishing technique. But when you have good flow like we have in our western Washington rivers, uh, this spoon will almost action by itself. There are times when you may fish water that's a little slower and you are going to impart some action on that lure by simply turning the reel handle. Um, let's talk about leaders. Typically, typically, if I'm drift fishing a Dick Knight spoon, I'll fish about a four foot leader. 
uh, I fish five and six foot leaders if I'm plunking or if I'm trolling a dick night spoon, but drift fishing, I'm typically around a four foot leader. I also like to use fluorocarbon. That stiffer line allows that spoon to action a little more sharply than just normal monofilament. So grab yourself some reasonable fluorocarbon line and fish with your dick knight spoon. Um, really quick, it totally depends on where you are or what kind of space you have to fish. But if I am fishing these rivers, I'm using 10 pound main line. My leaders are only eight pound. I'm fishing an ultralight setup. Uh, I have put very large coho, large kings on a dick knight spoon on 10 pound line, eight pound leaders all day long. Uh, you're not gonna break off as long as you don't try and hog that fish in. So when you have an opportunity, get yourself some spoons, get down to the river, get everything set up and start fishing those dick knight spoons. Because I got to tell you guys, if you're not fishing a dick night, you're just not fishing right. Thanks for watching.